I'm Mackenzie Rogers. I'm Katie Richards. And today we're here with Jim Bender. What is your philosophy behind your farm? It is that, uh, well, one way to put it would be that uh, we can do better than just, uh, I think we can do better than just put together a profitable commercial uh, farming operation. I think that we can also incorporate uh, large environmental goals. Uh, in, in these operations, and that's um, what I wanted to demonstrate from the very from the very beginning, an operation that is not only uh, commercially viable, uh, one that one that others could do, but one that uh, expresses very specific environmental goals. Can you please explain your typical crop slash animal rotation? We might think of a rotation as starting with uh, a soil. Uh, fertility uh, improving crop, uh, such as alfalfa, uh, insofar as it's a legume. Um, so we establish alfalfa and, and leave that four or five years. Then we move from that to uh, a crop, um, a row crop such as corn, which can take advantage of the fertility which has been built up by the alfalfa. And then we might go back and forth between corn and soybeans a couple of times. And then perhaps into a small, um, uh, in, into a solid seeded crop such as oats. And then we may, th then it, we may end that summer with uh, uh, a forage crop such as turnips. And then maybe go back to soybeans and then, then we might think that the whole rotation is completed and we cycle back into the alfalfa. What animals do you raise? This farm has, uh, includes um, beef cattle um, and it's, it's primarily organized into a cow-calf operation. How do you integrate the two entities? Well, that's, <clears throat> that's extremely important on this farm uh, and uh, it's sort of a long story. I'm, I, I'm not going to cover everything, but uh, as we see it, um, there is a way to, to, you use the word integrate, there's a way to do that that uh, reinforces uh, each, of the, each of the two components and also uh, allows us, it enables us in great measure to, to carry forth those environmental goals that I referred to. So um, we, we, we think it's primary that we have diversified crop rotation on this farm, as I was, was implied a moment ago when I listed all the crops. In many cases, um, the, those two goals are made possible by the presence of livestock on the farm. I mean, for example, I mentioned uh, permanent pastures on, on fragile lands, and I mentioned hay and grass production. Um, those are only viable. Um, when, when uh, livestock are present on the farm. Um, and so, so those are a, a couple of examples. Uh, another way that, <clears throat> that they reinforce each other is uh, a farm such as this with, or, with uh, organic uh, principles usually needs to include in the rotation crops that um, are not very profitable. And the livestock help to uh, minimize those problems, uh, such as, for example, just right outside this barn, uh, the cows right now are grazing on, on uh, winter wheat. Uh, so there, there's, we're getting some value from that wheat in addition to uh, simply producing, producing grain, which is something that um, sometimes is not all that profitable. What measures do you take to ensure soil retention and quality? There, there are a variety of basic strategies. So one has to do with simply with physical structures, uh, terraces and, and uh, waterways. Um, we, um, when I farmed uh, uh, 642 acres, which was, to, which was until just recently, we had uh, um, over 25 miles of, of uh, water diversion terraces, and uh, many, many acres of uh, in grassed waterways. So there are physical structures. Uh, soil conservation is also obtained through um, the, the, the crop diversification and rotation that we were just referring to. Um, an, an example is the, the alfalfa 
um, is a crop that is particularly effective in, in arresting soil erosion. And then earlier I mentioned uh, putting our the most fragile lands into permanent pastures, which is another uh, strategy that almost completely eliminates soil erosion.